hey what is going on guys welcome to part 2 of this android kotlin beginner tutorial series on tic-tac-toe in this one we will be making this layout okay so in the previous tutorial we had set up our project and we ended up with this template we'll just remove the texture in the middle and change this constraint layout to a linear layout okay this is how we will structure our layout we would have a vertical linear layout as the parent and it would have five children uh, child one would be a constraint layout this would hold all of our text views child two three and four would be horizontal linear layouts these would hold our gamepad buttons and child five would be a relative layout this would hold the reset game button okay so we have our parent linear layout and we have set its orientation to vertical inside of this we first create a constraint layout we set its layout width to match parent and layout height to wrap content now this constraint layout will hold our three text views on the top let's create the first text view set its layout width and height to wrap content we set the text to scoreboard and text size attribute to 30 dp so that the text is a little bit bigger now we are going to switch over to the design tab and set the left and right constraints of this text view like this all right now let's create the second text view uh, set the layout width and height to wrap content set the text to player 1 colon 0 and text size to 30 dp uh, this text view would be where we update the score of player 1 uh, before we set the constraints of this text view we need to go over to our constraint layout and set the layout height property to 100 dp uh, this would give us enough room to put our player 1 and player 2 text views now switch over to the design tab and make this text view stick to the bottom left of the constraint layout by setting the bottom and left constraints like so let's also add a top constraint to the scoreboard text view so that it always sticks to the top now just copy paste the player 1 text view and change the text to player 2 colon 0 now go to the design tab and pull this text view to the right side by adding the right constraint and deleting the left constraint that is already there. We'll just add a padding of 5 dp to our constraint layout so that it looks a little bit nicer. Add IDs to the three text views so that we can refer to them from our Kotlin code. Now Android Studio is giving us a warning about the hard-coded strings. So we will just extract the strings into a separate strings.xml file and refer to them here. Give your string resource a name and click OK. Now do the same for the other two text views. We have one more warning here on the text size attribute. Uh, let's change this dp to sp to get rid of this warning. Uh, like we did for our strings, we will also extract this uh, text size dimension into a separate dimensions.xml file. Now let's create a horizontal linear layout as the second child. Uh, set its layout width to match parent and layout height to wrap content. By default, the orientation is set to horizontal so we don't need to put any orientation attributes here. Now let's put three buttons inside of this linear layout. To center these three buttons, we go to linear layout and set the gravity attribute to center. Now let us copy this linear layout and paste it two more times. Now let us put some text on these buttons as per their position on this 3x3 game board. 
Now we will add IDs to all of our buttons. The ID for each button is shown in the picture on the top. Finally, we create the last child which is a relative layout. We set its layout width to match parent and height to wrap content. Inside this, we put a button widget, set its layout width and height attributes to wrap content and set the text attribute to reset game. To center the button horizontally inside relative layout, we set its layout underscore center horizontal attribute to true. Also add a top margin of 10 dp to this relative layout. Extract this margin into dimension.xml file and name it layout underscore margin. Also extract the reset game string into strings.xml. Now let us run our app to see what it looks like. Alright, everything seems fine. But as you can see, none of our buttons do anything. In the next tutorial, we'll write some Kotlin code and turn our boring app into this. You can check out a more detailed version of this tutorial on my blog, link in the description below. Alright, that's it for this video. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one.